Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and all you in between. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be talking about alien abduction experiences. So, the inner space of, of a masochist mind. So, what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm exploring the motivational motivational aspects of alien abduction experiences. So, in the prototypical alien abduction, an alien <coughs> abducts. I'm looking specifically at women, so I'm going to be t referring only to women from now on. So what an alien does is they abduct a woman, take her to the ship, put her on a table, strap her down, and start probing her body. So this seems like fantasy, but it seems like fantasy, it seems like fiction, but what I can tell you through a lot of research and a lot of reading is that these people genuinely believe that the abductions took place and the intrusive medical procedures are psychologically damaging to them and it's very traumatic and it leaves indelible scars. And in the typical abduction experiences, there's masochistic elements. There's, um, when the aliens probe the woman's body, there's a loss of control because the woman can't move. There's pain because the aliens are experimenting on her. So if you look at the prototypical abduction experience, there's elements of masochism. And the problem with these abductions, as I said before, is that something known as cognitive dissonance arises. So basically, cognitive dissonance is when you're at it, when a certain experience does not coincide with your belief. So for instance, Jerry was abducted by aliens. He knows that that's impossible, but he also knows that it happened. So what happened does not coincide what you know can happen, and this is extremely psychologically damaging because you don't know which is which. Reality does not coincide with what you think should be reality, and it just leaves you messed up. So by addressing the psychological harms of alien abduction experiences, we're alleviating the psychological harm inflicted by them. However, so, we've, so researchers across all fields of psychology have analyzed alien abduction experiences. They have proposed their own theories. They have analyzed the effects of it. But there is one thing missing. There is one thing that no one has been able to find. And that's the cause. What causes these alien abduction experiences? That's the gap in research. And without this gap, you can't really address the phenomenon because, as I said, the phenomenon inflicts psychological harm. And because people have been unable to find the cause, there's no way to alleviate the harm because you can only alleviate the psychological effects once you've pinpointed the cause. And that's, what mi that's what's missing in alien abduction research. So, based on this, based on this gap, my research question is, to what extent is a scene in which the alien leader carries out medical experiments on women's body, which often involves probing, represent a, masoch a masochistic fantasy of both pain and a loss of control that has arisen from the burdens of modern selfhood? So my question has arisen from the gap, and it's taken from a motivational perspective, which encompasses a wide gamut of psychological subfields, and it directly tries to pinpoint the cause of this phenomenon. So these are some of the, def I won't go through each and every one right now, but these are some of the definitions which I will define throughout my PowerPoint. So before I delve into my method and my findings, I really quickly want to contextualize my research. So basically, there's two tiers to my research. There's the element of masochism, there's alien abductions, and then there's the connection between masochism and alien abductions. So masochism. Masochism is defined as a desire to escape the self. And I know what you're wondering, what is the self? Well, the self is your identity. And according to Newman Baumeister, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's a leading research in the motivational aspect of alien abductions. The self has two main goals. It wants to maintain positive evaluation and it wants to have control over the environment. The minute a person, and what does it mean to have maintain positive evaluations? It means like succeeding in life, uh, maintaining a positive image among others. It's just everything that makes you feel good, not failing, feeling like you're worth something, that's positive evaluation. And control over environment, it's just your sense of control. And the moment a person feels like they're lacking in these two aspects, it makes the self aversive. It makes their own self-concept aversive. And according to the escape from the self theory, once this happens, once awareness of the self, once awareness that you haven't been able to maintain positive evaluation, and once awareness that you have no control of the environment, once you become aware of that, you want to escape it. And you escape it through cognitive deconstruction. What is cognitive deconstruction? It's mental narrowing for the purpose of stripping away meaning. 
So basically, it's kind of confusing, but you reduce yourself to a biological identity, experiencing only pain and pleasure. So you're no longer the person who failed the math test. You're no longer the person who just got divorced. You're no longer, you escape from the self, and you, so th if this is a self, you reduce yourself to just a biological identity who can only experience the five senses. It's really confusing, and it'll be more explicit in my essay, but that's basically the gist of it. And what this, and masochism allows you, and masochism is a means through which you can escape the self, because it does two things. First, the pain involved in masochism, as I said before, reduces you to an to a biological entity experiencing only pain and, and pleasure. And also masochistic activity, it allows you to focus on the now. You're not thinking about anything else, you're only experiencing pain and you're focusing on the means and not the ends. So that's why a lot of motivational psychologists, including Newman, Baumeister, Freud, a lot, a lot of uh, researchers across in the field of masochism, so masochism, literature um, portrays masochism as an effective escape from self-awareness. So this brings us to alien abduction experiences. There's a stark correlation between alien abduction experiences and masochism because just like loss of control in masochism is achieved through bondage, loss of control in alien abduction experiences is achieved through, well, we don't really know. We just know that they have no control because the alien is telepathically controlling them. Uh, just like pain is experienced in masochism because that's the inherent nature of it. Pain is, pain is also experienced in alien abduction experiences through intrusive medical procedures. So the point being, oh, humiliation is also present in both. So the point being that alien abductions represent an extreme form of a masochistic fantasy. So I want, so this implies that there's a correlation between the two and this implies that both share similar motivational roots. And I will delve more into this in my final. So my method. My method was something known as thematic analysis, which is very specific to phen phenomenological uh, research. So when you're exploring a phenomenon, you usually use thematic analysis. And thematic analysis is basically when you find patterns among qualitative data, specifically data that's about a specific phenomenon. So basically, you know, for me specifically, what I did was I took a look at 15 different abduction experiences, analyzed both their history and their experience, and then found the common points, the common points among each of these experiences. So, if the, so what I also codified the information. So basically, I took the abductees and I, I, I numbered them: abductee one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 15, and then I would, and then I would codify it by doing pain, loss of control, humiliation. So it turned out so. So I codified the information and categorized them according to these three elements. So that's basically thematic analysis, looking for patterns of research. My working thesis has four tiers, and I'll go quickly through this for the sake of time. My first tier is, my first tier is the alien abduction scene, scene in which the alien leader carries out medical procedures on a woman's body contain, contains masochistic elements of both pain and a loss of control. So this is the first part that I'm proving. My second, which presupposes that both share similar motivational roots. Second, I'm taking the correlation and explaining why this correlation implies that both originate from the same motivational cause. That's the second thing I'm proving. My third tier, while masochistic activity results from the desire to escape the self, which is indicative of a burdensome self, alien abduction experiences often go hand in hand with some sort of personal calamity. That's the third thing I'm proving, which will be proved through my findings. Fourth, in turn implying that alien abduction experiences represent an escape from the burdens of modern selfhood. So after proving these three tiers, providing evidence for these, both in my literature review and in my findings, this is the final conclusion I'm going to reach, which directly pinpoints the gap in research, which, which is the cause of this phenomenon. So for my findings, oh goody. So when <laughs> I looked at 15 different, as I said before, I looked at 15 different abductees. And what I did was I took the abductees, I looked at their history, and I also looked at their abduction narrative. And most abductees, most narratives, so out of the 15, 13, 13 of the abductees reported a similar story. They were strapped onto a table, they were probed on, they tried to escape, but they couldn't because they were either strapped to a table or the aliens just had telepathic control over them. So out of the 13, coincided with the prototypical abduction story. 
Masoch mas masochistic elements were present in all 15. At, in all 15 objectives, at least two masochistic elements, the three being loss of control, humiliation, and pain, at least two of them were present in every objective narrative. And four, in their history, <laughs> in the history section of abductees, all of them suffered from some sort of personal calamity, whether it be divorce, they were abused as children, they were sexually abused, they were very dissatisfied with their life, they felt like their life was too traditional, a third marriage, fourth marriage, all of them suffered some sort of personal calamity. And that's very interesting because I won't delve too deeply into synthesis, but this personal calamity could perhaps reflect badly on the self, which in turn instills in them a desire to escape self-awareness, which comes in the form of an anal insertion. That might sound confusing, but that's motivational psychology. It's very confusing. Significance. So after I looked at the history, we pinpointed the per we know that personal calamities reflect poorly on the self, which I explained earlier in my literature review section. And the significance of my findings is that, so I found that personal calamities that reflect badly on the self could potentially be the cause of alien abduction experiences. So what do my findings do? The significance of my findings is that, is that they offer a literal cause for a subjective phenomenon. So you can't really target the alien abduction experience itself, but you can target the psychological normal thing causing them, which is a personal calamity. So this adds a new layer to abduction research because although people have found correlations between masochism and alien abductions, they haven't been able to find that personal calamity that is causing all of this. So, so I added a new layer to abduction research. And as I said before, targeting the normal, literal, phen phenomenological, can't pronounce that word, cause. And treatment for abductees, with this cause, we no longer have to be worried about, oh, alien abduction experiences are too out there, so we can't target them. Because we found that the origins are, it's a personal calamity that's causing these masochistic fantasies. So now, because we're dealing with something in the realms of the normal, we can provide treatment for abductees. This is something that is very significant to the psychological community for treating the psychological harm that arises from these experiences. And fourth, it provides insight into the human psyche. So this is this is less less important than what I mentioned above, but it it it, it adds a new under, a new layer of understanding to human nature and what the mind will do in response to psychological in response to pain and in response to stressful um, stressful situations. The power of the human mind. The, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Vanessa.